Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me today. During these days leading up to Easter, uh, I've been taking time to focus my thoughts on the cross of Christ. And uh, I've chosen to meditate right now uh, on 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2. And uh, I'd like to just share with you today a few verses from uh, chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians where the Apostle Paul brings us to his reflections on the message of the cross. Starting at verse 17, it says, For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech, for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know that it is the very power of God, as the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers and the scholars and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for a sign from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended, and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. So here, Paul is dealing with divisions that were happening among those believers there in Corinth. They were having fights and debates with each other. Some were picking their favorite teacher and finding things to argue about over against others. I follow Paul. I, I follow Apollos. No, I follow Peter. No, I only follow Christ. And Paul says, are you dividing up Christ like that? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? No. Were you baptized into me? No, you weren't. And it's on that note that he begins this incredible teaching that he gives on the cross of Christ. And he makes it very clear that everything he had to preach and say was centered in Christ crucified. It's important for us to remember that in the days of the Roman Empire when crucifixion was practiced, the death on a cross carried a deep stigma against it, a great aversion to it. It was extremely dehumanizing, both physically and psychologically, as that person hung there naked, dying on that cross. And the shame and the mockery involved in crucifixion knew absolutely no bounds. To speak about a crucified Messiah seemed to many to be very close to blasphemy. It would not fit in with the teaching of the philosophers of the world. It could not fit in with the the great scholars and scribes that sought out a, a moral or religious set of principles to guide our lives. It didn't fit with the great debaters of human wisdom and expertise, not then and not today. All of these were offended by the message of the cross. Now, in this passage, Paul is, is dealing with this problem of division among the believers, and he, clear, and he declares that there's only one dividing line among mankind that's valid, and that is the dividing line produced by the message of the cross. To those who are perishing, he says, it's offensive and it's foolish and they reject it. To those who are being saved and are given eternal life, no matter what their background, no matter what their IQ, no matter what their social position, this message of the cross is the very power of God. This message of the cross unites us as followers of Christ. Through him, we're made one new humanity. Every wall of division is broken down. 
Paul says, through the weakness of God in Christ, carrying our sin to the, uh, to the cross, that's stronger and more powerful than the greatest of human wisdom and human strength. I want to invite you to dwell deeply on this message of the cross and all that it signifies in these coming days leading up to Easter as we think about what happened on that first Easter Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a great day.